Are you under the impression that all writers write novels or poetry or columns for magazines? Well, that's not true. Some writers write because it's part of their profession. In fact, a very important part of their profession. Our next guest writes very important documents that get published. My name is Vin Aquino, and our next guest is amazingly Judge Dan Angelillo. Dan, <laughs> hey, let's talk writing, buddy. Oh, gosh. Uh, we go back. Uh, we've been friends since the late 1970s. Yeah. Uh, who thought then that we'd be sitting here right. someday talking about my books and the fact that you are a judge in the appellate division? That's right. Yeah. Uh, tell, tell us a little bit about your position. Well, first of all, thank you, Vinny, for oh, uh, the invite. And I'm as you said, to have you as here. you said, uh, our real, our friendship goes back to I think 1977. Yeah, a few way years. back in my old Campanella days. <laughs> a few years back. <laughs> yeah, it's way but, back. But uh, it's great being here today with you, and uh, and I'm now an associate justice of the appellate division of the New York State Supreme Court. Okay, so what does that mean? I mean, you don't try cases. You don't sit there with the gavel, right? No, I did at one time. Oh. I mean, I, I was elected to the Westchester County Court. 20 years ago, oh, 1993. Wow. So I served on the uh, county court in Westchester County, presiding over many, many different uh, types of criminal cases. Um, mm. Murder in the first degree, wow. murder second degree, rape, robbery, burglary, all the felony type yeah. trials. And uh, then 14 years ago, I was elected to the Supreme Court of New York State, and then in 2006, appointed to the appellate division of the state Supreme Court. And what that basically means is that I'm not trying cases any longer, like you said. I'm right. not there with uh, witnesses in the courtroom and uh, litigants um, and, and lawyers um, cross-examining witnesses and a jury present. That's, that doesn't take place in what I'm hmm. doing now. Now it's really just the, the judges. So we usually sit in panels of four or five judges with the lawyers that are there with or without their client not required to have their client there, right. and they present legal argument to us. So when people say, I'm taking this to the Supreme Court, or I'm taking this to the appellate, yeah. that's you. Yeah, right. They, they say, <laughs> I'm taking it to a higher court. A higher court, and, and you are the higher court. <clears throat> that's the appellate division of the state Supreme Court, and uh, we will review the decisions of the trial court. And, and when, what I mean by review is we decide whether to uh, affirm, uh, that is, agree with yeah. what the trial judge did, or, or reverse the trial judge, yeah. or, or possibly maybe modify it or t tweak it a little bit to the right. decision. But that's our that's the review process that uh, we have. We either affirm or reverse what the trial judge's decision was. So now, <coughs> one of the reasons I was excited about having you here mm -hmm. is because what people don't realize is that that's where writing comes in. After you hear all of this, like the, the lawyers present briefs to you, mm -hmm. and you get all these facts, mm -hmm. and then you have to take these facts and develop a paper. Yes. And that paper is an opinion paper. Right. And that actually gets published as your word based on your decision mm -hmm. of everything you heard. Yes, and that, when, when you say published, it will be on the internet as well as in the wow. hardbound uh, books, uh, and it's um, really read by mostly by lawyers, but it's open to non-lawyers. Yeah. And, uh, and so <coughs> this is an a, a opinion paper. Now, when I did Hauntings of the Hudson River Valley, what I did is people said, hey, Vin, do you know there's ghosts in Hudson Valley? <laughs> and can you do for ghosts what you did for Sybil Luddington? And I did a what you talk about? <laughs> they said, "Listen, here's what I want you Call to do." All Ghostbusters, right? Yeah, it was Ghostbusters. <laughs> they said, "Here's what I want you to do. You're going to come in the basements with us. You're going to come into the cemeteries, and you're going to help us meet these ghosts. Oh. We know where they are. We don't know who they are. Mm -hmm. So I had to prove that these ghosts exist. For example, there's an inn right here in Carmel called Smalley's Inn, and I had to go in there with these Ghostbusters <laughs> and try to find these ghosts." And put these pieces together. People said, yeah, I, I saw a face in the, in, in the mirror. Another one said, yeah, I saw a floating this or that. And, uh, all these different stories. So I had to get them 
put them together, and at the end of each chapter, I wrote what was called an investigative summary, taking all of these facts and putting them together with my conclusion based on what I found. No, that's what you do. Well, well yeah, we, we write a conclusion. Yeah. Uh, how do we get to that conclusion? And yeah. that's what we, what we do is we'll listen to all the facts, the arguments made by the lawyers. We review the, the record that the trial judge had. And what I mean by the record is all the documents that the trial judge considered. Maybe there was a motion, opposition to the motion. Maybe there were certain exhibits. Statements by witnesses. Statements, affidavits that are submitted. Wow. All of that. Or if it's a review after a trial, we'll have the transcript from the trial testimony. And that's, that's the record, plus the briefs that you made reference yeah. to. And those briefs are legal arguments that are made by the lawyers. Yeah, all those things, that the, the final arguments of the, of the lawyers right. saying, look, you know, this is what we want you to understand, everything that was said to the jury. Right. So, so we, we then arrive at a decision. After mm -hmm. we've reviewed all of that, we arrive at the decision, and then we put in on paper how wow. we get to that decision. I mean, it's, it's very easy to just say uh, uh, trial court affirmed, a trial court reversed, but how, how do you get to now, that? Yeah, so you, you have to detail why you got to the conclusion that you did. Yeah. Yes, we have to set forth Fascinating. our reasons, our analysis, and we do that in these, as you said, these judicial opinions, these um, uh, decisions that we render, and in these opinions we'll set forth the, the uh, the facts and the analysis, our analysis, we, re, we uh, look at legal pr uh, precedent, uh, cases that came before us, and uh, then we arrive at a conclusion. All right. Now, <coughs> I would imagine that you have a guide of some sort. I know that there's a text that you refer to mm -hmm. from time to time. This Is this a text that you, that helps you in a way? Uh, yeah. I'm going to put this up here. Yeah. Uh, this, this is a, a book on opinion writing. Okay. And it was authored by uh, a, a federal district court judge, uh, United States uh, federal judge. I'm a, a New York state judge. Okay. Every state has their own state yeah, judges, right. and we have a federal court system. Right. We have a New York state court system, a federal, star, uh, federal court system. So I'm a, a New York state judge. But this was written by a federal judge. And it, it applies whether you're writing opinions for the United States uh, court system or the New York State court so system. So it gives you a sort of a guideline on how to write these opinions? Exactly. Yeah, and, we, and what we try to do is we have, uh, it's really a five part, five parts to an opinion. You start with the opening, okay. uh, which is you're setting forth, what, what is the, the issue here? It's like an introduction. Yeah, like an introduction. You know, what right. is the reader going to read about? Are they going right. to read about a criminal case? Are they going to read about <laughs> a civil case? Yeah. Because uh, we handle all types of cases. Right. Criminal, civil, matrimonial, family court, all, really? all wow. different kinds. You, you name the case, um, that, 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 that case will come yeah. before our court. So the opening paragraph will tell the reader a little bit about what they're going to read about. Then we set forth the issues, the contentions of the parties, a summary of the facts, the legal analysis, and then the conclusion. Now, I went through that very quickly, but there's a five parts. Yeah. And that's how this, this book is structured. And you mentioned an ABC. Yes, I, I did mention that, and, and one, of the, one of the things that uh, is important in, in writing judicial decisions is uh, what we refer to as the ABCs of, of, of writing, that is to be accurate, to be brief, and to be concise. Yeah, because it's key that you just say what you have to say, kind of like short, sweet, and to the point. Yeah, I mean, I prefer reading that when, I'm, when, we, we, when we review the lawyer's legal briefs, yeah, when you I want them to do it too. Yeah, we of course we want them to do that because we have so much to read in our position that we want to optimize our time, be as efficient as we can with our time. So whenever I'm lecturing on CLE programs, continuing legal education programs, the lawyers on appellate practice, on appellate mm -hmm. writing, I suggest respectfully to them that they do present legal briefs that are accurate, brief, and concise because as a reader, and I think you'll agree with me, you, you, you want to get to the point, yeah, and, get you, to the and, point. and you don't That's want right. uh, a lot of reading that uh, takes you no place. <laughs> yeah. Now these, so so it's very important that a lawyer knows how to write too. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah well, I mean, you have a, a whole year devoted to legal research and writing in law school. Your first year wow. is a is course. Right? Oh, a, a course, course on how to do. Yeah. Now speaking of courses, mm -hmm. 
didn't you recently go to Africa to oh, yeah. teach lawyers uh, yeah, how to yeah. do this? Yeah, we, we did. Talk yeah. to me a little about, about that. Okay. Ghana, right? Ga Ghana. Ghana. Ghana, which is a small country in West Africa. And I traveled there with the Giving to Ghana Foundation okay. about a year ago. It was last summer. And um, we traveled with 20 volunteers. It's a not-for-profit um, uh, group in New York. It was founded about seven, eight years ago. And we traveled last year to uh, <coughs> excuse me, ins instruct uh, them on, um, on mediation and also on, on writing. And uh, when I say them, we had a, a group of professors from St. John's Law School and Fordham Law School with law school students, three judges. We also had some nurses and some medical people that we had different components of this trip that made up these 20, 25 volunteers. So myself and two other judges spent a few days there addressing and speaking to the judges of their high court. And we spoke to them about legal, uh, about writing opinions. We, we learned that many of their opinions are very, very long, mm -hmm. very heavy on the facts. Lots and lots of facts, but very minimal legal analysis. So we, we kind of made suggestions. Now, we weren't right. telling them uh, mm -hmm. what to Not do. Not telling them what to do, but. Just, but but just uh, kind of giving them some suggestions. And we were in um, a city called Sunyani. We also went to Kamasi. And we wow. spoke in those two, to those two cities. They kind of to set the stage, it's an 11-hour flight from JFK to Accra. Wow. Accra is the capital of Ghana. Then a, a one-hour flight to Kamasi and then a two-hour uh, bus ride to oh, Sunyani. Yay, yay. Now, Sunyani has about 70,000 people, wow. uh, you know, but it's, uh, it, it's way out in the country still, <laughs> and they don't have the kind of access to the court system You didn't that do any have. lion hunting? or uh... <laughs> Didn't do any of that, uh, <laughs> but uh, they, they don't have that kind of access to the court system that we have here. Yeah. So uh, they rely a lot on, on mediation. Wow. So the professors and the law school students spoke to uh, tribal chiefs, uh, to Catholic priests, ministers, uh, Muslim imams, because they're the ones that do most of the mediation there. They're the ones that resolve cases. People can't get to the court system, they'll go to the tribal chief or go to the local priest, and they would resolve the case. So we gave uh, lectures on, on mediation. Uh, that was wow. part of the program that we were involved in. So would you say that writing is a harder part of your job? Well, it's a very important part of our job yeah. because it, the position that I have now is an associate justice of the appellate division. Right. We issue uh, at our second apartment out of Brooklyn, that's where our, the court is located, four to five thousand uh, decisions each year. And those wow. decisions are used as, I used the word precedent earlier, they, they, they set the, uh, uh, the, the standard today and then cases that follow will look at those cases yeah, that we go, today. Yeah, wow. And, so and you look at them as for guidance. Yeah. So, so what we say is you very, say, Yeah, this is documentation. The yeah. things you say yeah. are the word. Well, in, in, in a sense, in, in, it really In the legal is. profession, it's, it's important because yeah. our highest court is the Court of Appeals in New York State, and there's seven judges on the court. Right. And they issue about uh, 200, 250 cases a year, 200, 250 decisions a year. Wow. And we, we're in our second apartment, four to 5,000 decisions. We have hundreds of thousands of cases that come to the New York State yeah. court system every year. But very few go to the appellate division, and even yeah. a smaller number go to the Court wow. of Appeals. So wow. we really are the last word, the yeah. final word the on the case. The book stops here. <laughs> pretty much so. Yeah. Pretty much so. Yeah. So when, when we issue a decision, that's pretty much the end, the end of the case. And what we say does have uh, uh, not only affect the parties on that particular case, litigants on that case, but will have an impact on future cases that are heard and, and uh, other cases that come into the court system. Now, what about editing? Mm -hmm. Do you edit your own work? I mean, you, you must have to be very good in English. <laughs> well, fortunately, in, my, in our court, where I work at the Appellate Division Second Apartment. Right. Is, it's in Brooklyn. That's where the main courthouse is. And the geographical area of the cases that we hear arguments on right. are all of Long Island, Brooklyn, Queens, Staten Island, and up here in Putnam County, where we yep. are, Dutchess, Orange, Rockland, and, Put and Westchester counties. That's our geographical area. That's the second judicial department. The first judicial department is Br Bronx and Manhattan. 
And fortunately, in our courthouse in Brooklyn, we have about 50 lawyers wow. called court attorneys. And, and we have five or six lawyers assigned to the decisions department. And we have editors that are in the decisions department. Wow, and I know it's kind of a long answer goodness. to your question, <laughs> but these editors will review every one of those four to 5,000 decisions that go out. Yeah, because I wonder about that. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. if you're not great in grammar, uh, these things are documents oh, for no, history. No. Yeah, we, we try to take great pride in, in, uh, yep, in yep. what we And really making sure that those are yes. grammatically correct exactly. and written well. Every, uh, every judge has a personal law clerk, a, a, law, a lawyer, yeah. and, a, and a secretary, a uh, legal assistant. Wow. And um, my, I work closely with my law clerk. She and I will review all the decisions that we issue, and, and, uh, and we're constantly uh, making changes. Now, this sounds majorly time-consuming mm -hmm. to write these reports. How do you do that and run for re-election? Aren't you? You're up, right? Oh, yes. It's 14 years <laughs> yeah. has passed already, right? Yeah, it's a 14-year term. Wow, 14 mm -hmm. years. Yeah. So basically, if you run three terms, mm -hmm. you do it from the old age home? <laughs> <laughs> well, this is my second 14-year term. Second 14-year four. term. Yeah, hopefully that will be my, my, <laughs> my last. Yeah, <laughs> Yeah. otherwise you're going to be getting up there, Dad. But, well, uh, we, do, we have, do, do have age limitations yeah. in the court system, yeah. So now, uh, so now you have to be elected just like other judges, in and fact, you have to uh, run a campaign and uh, do all that? I have to be re-elected. In order to stay on, uh, at, in order to continue on the appellate division, I have to be reelected to the oh. in this ninth judicial district, the five counties that I mentioned earlier. So now the ninth judicial district. Mm -hmm. uh, say that again. W what, what do you actually represent? Okay, Westchester County. Okay. And Putnam County. Right. And then uh, Dutchess County. Wow. Go across the river to Orange County. Wow. And down to Rockland County. Holy. That's cow. the ninth district. And about two, a little over two million people live there. Yeah, so you right have there. to campaign to two million people now? Yes, yes. Oh, yeah, it's larger yeah. than like two congressional districts. Wow. So it's a, it's a large area. Yeah. And uh, yes, I'm on the, on the ballot in, in November. Um, because the 14 years, believe it or not, <laughs> I don't know where the time goes. Uh, well, I don't either. <laughs> I mean, it seems like yesterday we were 20 year olds. 20 year olds, you know? yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's a big difference. Now your son is almost 20 years old. Yeah, yeah that's right. And I have two grandchildren. Yeah, yeah. time passes. <laughs> but well, I have know? a 28 year old daughter and, and two right? and two wow. boys. Yeah, wow, two boys. So yeah, they're all. Everybody's getting older. Yeah, but it the, goes by fast. The, the district is um, is at is at five counties. Assuming I'm reelected, then I can continue on the appellate division, which is in Brooklyn, as I said before. And they yeah. hear the appeals not only from the Ninth Judicial District, but from all of Long Island, wow. Brooklyn, Queens, and Staten so Island. So, is there a next step? I mean, are you going to be president someday? Oh. Or what? <laughs> I don't <laughs> or, know about that. Or no. are you staying? I mean, I, I enjoy or, the court well, system. I mean, enjoy being a judge. So, uh, if I you really get elected for 14 years, you're in for it. You're going to yeah, stay there 14 and, years uh, and continue and doing hopefully what you do stay, well. Hopefully, stay on uh, on the appellate division. That would be the, go the governor would uh, uh, hopefully continue my appointment there. I was appointed by Governor Pataki in oh. 2006 to you the know, appellate division. Uh, we're hoping to have his daughter on this oh, show. Wow. She's just written a book. Okay. So uh, we're crossing our fingers that we're going to. Well, when you when you see her, go. tell her to thank her dad for appointing me <laughs> I certainly will. to the appellate division. <laughs> and then in 2010, Governor David Patterson. Oh. Appointed me as the senior, a senior judge of the appellate division. Wow! So, so now is that as high as you go in the appellate division? Yeah, in the appellate division. Well, there's a presiding justice of the appellate division. We have 18 judges on the appellate division, second department. Keep in mind that we have about 11, 1,200 full-time judges in the state of New York, and we have another 1,500 part-time judges. We have 25 to 3,000 judges in the state, believe it or not. So we have qu quite a few judges, and and. Uh, in the, in the court system, the presiding justice of the appellate division is, oversees the entire second department. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So the only high court higher than that, uh, you're talking about going higher, is the, <laughs> is the Court of Appeals. Yeah, wow. And, and that's uh, our set. We have seven judges there, and they sit in Albany. That's where our Court of Appeals is located. It's not called the Supreme Court, and I know that's a little confusing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because I'm a state Supreme Court judge, and you say st Supreme Court, you think, well, that you must be the highest judge the in the highest state. Highest judge, that's Supreme. And no, no, it doesn't work like that in New York. Right. A New York Supreme Court judge is the highest trial judge. The highest trial judge. The opinion papers. Mm -hmm. Do all of the Supreme Court judges have to do that? Do all the appellate judges? Yeah. Have to well. Do that? well 
every uh, judge, when presented with uh, an issue that um, or decision that has to be made, will uh, will uh, render uh, in writing a, a decision. Now, some some of them are going to be a couple sentences or a couple paragraphs, yeah. and some are going to be 30, 40, 50 pages. Wow. And it really depends on, on a particular case and what, what's warranted on that So that I'm going to slide into what I usually do on this show for all writers. I'm going to say, so when do you write, and how do you write, and where do you write? Do you use a laptop? Do you use a desktop? Do you uh, handwrite? Uh, well, well, what about the actual writing? So you have to keep in mind my age. Yeah. And Thirty. <laughs> we're the same age, approximately. So thirty I mean, something. Well, and we we didn't grow up with computers, <laughs> right? That's right. You're so right. It's a lot different today. Yeah, it was a lot different. When I did "Kiss the Candy Days Goodbye" mm -hmm. in 1982, all handwritten. Yeah. In fact, I attribute my carpal tunnel to that book. Oh, okay. <laughs> because I have a box this big, mm -hmm. all handwritten, mm -hmm. where I wrote it and wrote it and wrote it and wrote it. Mm -hmm. In fact, when my son was a baby in the hospital, uh, they sent me the proofs. And I sat there, pen and paper, <laughs> you know, going through and, yeah. and trying to get it all done. Yeah. Uh, so so, it, so it, that was in 1982, you said? Yeah. So there's no computer then? No. So today, of course, we have computers, and it certainly makes things a lot easier. Yeah. However, my computer skills, and my son uh, will attest to that, that this, that they're not as good as uh, his, his skills. Yeah. And uh, but for, very for, uh, fortunate, I'm very fortunate, my law clerk, uh, Via Stamey, I mentioned her earlier, she is terrific on the, on the computer. She's a great writer. In fact, she's a writer herself. Maybe someday oh, you might want her on the show. Good. Yeah, it. sounds good. Uh, she just, I just read one of her short stories. She's published quite a few of them. Oh, really? And, oh, I and, do want her on the show. Oh, okay. I'll yeah, we'll, <laughs> we'll talk about that. <laughs> I'll tell her that. But uh, she's great. She's terrific on the computer. Her skills wow. are great. Yeah. And, um, so do my, you record? My, well, I, I've done that, too. My yeah, secretary good. does. That's use hard. I tried to do that. I can't do that. A lot of handwriting. I have to do. You know, I do, I was, you know, when the Selectric typewriter came out, I was like, yes, because, you know, it had more than one font. Yes. And to me, that was like, yes, that, yeah. that's technology. Yeah. Yeah. And then when they went to the pet computers, mm -hmm. and then the Apple IIe, and, you know, and little by little. But now, editing and revising on a computer, what a difference. Makes a big difference. What a yeah. difference. I used to have to retype the entire thing. Yeah. So it was crazy. I mean, the technology is just ter terrific. And you know, part of our, our, our writing is legal research. Legal yeah. research oh, is yeah. very, very important. And because, as I said earlier, we our decisions are based on precedent. What were, right. what were early decisions? What were, the, what were the decisions that we issued earlier? So in order to do that legal research, we use what we call Westlaw today, all on the computer, right. all on the internet, yeah. or, or Lexis Law. That's another research type of uh, 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 access that we have. But before we had the computer, everything was done by picking up the, the hard book and then yeah. reading it through. And then we had a set of volumes where wow. we would have to review and check yeah. to see whether or not the decision we're relying has been reversed. Wow. You don't want to cite a decision. I, know. I remember you know, some of the law offices with books and books and books mm. and shelves. Well, they may, you may still find those books. It's yeah. just that they're not, they're not oh, being yeah. used as much. Yeah, so right. Mostly everything yeah, because is now everything's on computer, on and computer it's so much now. easier to access. Oh, yes. Same thing with some of the cases. Now, are the reports by the lawyers, the briefs, are those written, or can you call those up on a computer as well or no? Well, th that's something that's kind of... Uh, in, in transition in the sense yeah. that we do have electronic filing at the trial court level. A lot of documents are filed electronically. Yeah. The federal court, I understand, almost everything is filed electronically. In our court, uh, the appellate division, second apartment, we still require the lawyers to submit the hard, yeah, the hard, hard copy. copy. Yeah. Right. Wow. And we, we'll have literally stacks of, of uh, briefs and records that, uh, that we have to go through for each day of argument. We, when we sit and hear arguments, maybe 18, 20 cases on the docket that day, and we sit with wow. four or five judges, so each case will have, it could be like this or like this, wow. of, the, of the record that we're reviewing, plus the arguments that are in writing, the legal briefs submitted by the lawyers. So, so instead of running for another 14 years, shouldn't you be fighting a retirement place <laughs> to, to go visit? This sounds like hard work. It is a lot of work. Yeah. I mean, yeah, people... Um, 
on the outside don't realize, I don't think, how, how many hours. How it really many, is. It's, yeah. it's, a, it's, a, it's a, basically a 24-7 kind of operation. It's yeah. constantly over the weekends and late at night, early in the morning. And thinking all the time and reviewing these cases in your head. Well, it's because the cases and the decisions that we, that we render, and, and whether it's the, the trial court, the appellate court, they're all cases that affect the parties yeah. that are before us. Lives depend on yeah. your decision. And especially the, on the criminal cases where one's liberty is at stake. Yeah, yeah. People Very important. go to jail for life. If, well, yeah. I, I've, and I've sentenced a, two, a few to life as well. Wow. Is that on the right? murder cases, sure. Wow. Yeah. When wow. I, was, uh, we, I tried those cases back in the 1990s. Yeah. yeah. So. Wow. Well, unbelievable. Unbelievable. So a lot of writing, a lot of learning. What about school? Did you have to go back, I mean, to, like, take courses in computers and try Well, to we do have training. Oh, good. Yeah. Yep. The court system provides that. Uh, that's good. So that's, that's helpful, especially when the legal research was transitioning to the computer. They, gave, they provided a fair amount of training on how to do legal research on the computer as opposed to you know, just using the books. So here's a big question for you. Is there going to be a book someday? A book? Yeah, a book about your experiences. <laughs> oh. You know, I've had uh, superintendents of schools. I had the commissioner of uh, the police commissioner of Yonkers. I've had people from all walks of life uh, who just all of a sudden said, you know what? Somebody has to know about what I've been through and all the things that I've done. Uh, would you ever you consider think, doing that? Do you think anybody would want to learn uh, read yeah, about Yeah, to me. find out yeah. What, it's, yeah. what it's like. Maybe even a novel. Where, mm -hmm. d did you ever do any kind of creative writing? No, not that. No. Uh, How could you? Yeah. You're so busy. I yeah. <laughs> don't have the time for that. No, yeah. no, no. I uh, um, had been keeping uh, a log. Well, I don't log is really not the right term, but yeah. like when. Uh, interesting issues would come up at the trial level, and uh, yeah. and uh, w whether it was during jury selection, you get some of the craziest uh, excuses oh, I why I can't the serve on I, I can't serve on jury duty. You know why yeah. I can't serve on jury <laughs> well, duty? Yeah. And I have a list of, of those yeah. I used to keep a record of. Well, you might want to someday consider yeah. doing a book, maybe even like this. You know, yeah. how do you, you know, what is your life like? Well, this has been absolutely fascinating for me. Uh, never thought all those years ago that we'd be sitting here talking about yeah. your years as a judge or my years as a writer uh but you've done well and you've made us all proud no, thanks, uh, wish you the best of luck in your re-election thank you uh hopefully people will get to know you mm -hmm. and get to meet you uh, i imagine you're going to be traveling all around I have been, uh, yeah, the last kissing few babies yeah. and uh, <laughs> a little bit of that yeah. well, i don't know about kissing the baby <laughs> Everybody's so protective today. <laughs> I know, really. Better not kiss any babies. Right. Good idea. Uh, but shake a lot of hands. Shake a lot of hands. Let people know who you are, what you believe in. Is there a statement that represents you? Who are you, Dan? A hard worker. A hard worker. Yeah. And you believe in the people. Compassionate person. And you believe in justice. In justice, definitely. Thank you, Vin. Pleasure to have you here. Good to see you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for meeting Dan Angelillo with me. He's not only my friend, he's yours. Thank you for joining us.